my first reaction to the phone ringing was, you know, it's five o'clock in the morning or 5.20. It must be something that's gone wrong. So my wife took the call and she was half asleep as I was. She couldn't quite understand what was going on, but he said, she said, well, the person is asking for you. And the person said, we have a call from Sweden for you. And I guess at that time I realized what was going on. But then they said, you know, you've, you've won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for 2013. I'm not quite sure what I said. I may have said thank you. <laughs> so, I know the person said then, aren't you excited? And I said, yes, I am, but I'm still half asleep. When students came in, I would give them a very well-defined problem and see how they did on that. And then we would sort of talk and I would try to get them to develop something, you know, obviously related to what was going on to do on their own. And so I think one thing I tried to instill them is, you know, their own originality, their ability to do things. You know, being at Harvard in particular, you know, you have outstanding students you have to try as early as possible to give them opportunity to do it sort of on their own while their you know, advice is available and criticism is available. And that was my idea as a mentor. I have a brother who's three years older and we were both you know, interested in the world and um, both my parents had studied physics so they had never actually gotten a degree in physics and well my brother was maybe 11 or something like that he asked for a chemistry set which they gave him and we had a basement and he set things up and made all kinds of awful smells and explosions and such and of course I as a younger brother wanted to participate my brother wouldn't let me he said it's too complicated for you so I asked my parents could I get a chemistry set and they decided that that wasn't a good idea to have two people with chemistry sets uh, might blow up the house so my father came up with the idea of getting me a microscope and in particular I started looking at uh, you know what was floating around in our gutters and so and I would feed a little bit and one day I discovered the, these rotifers, these little microscopic uh, creatures that swim around very fast. They have this little rotor in front which sort of spins and it's like a motor essentially except it's on their head and I would just watch them for hours and write down you know the traces and try to make something out of it. I think that was very important in sort of getting me interested in science and in biology. 